Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R440 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R440 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we're going to hop in. Uh, this video, as I mentioned, is going to be specifically focused on memory. Uh, so the R440 is a DDR4-based machine. There are 16 memory slots. And if you watched our first video in the series on CPUs, you'll notice there are uh, 10 of the 16 are on CPU 1 and 6 of the uh, 16 are on CPU 2. It's kind of a wonky configuration and we'll show you that in a minute when we go to install them. So if you're wondering uh, you know, which DIMM slots to install, if you're not maxing it out or you're not using all the DIMM slots, we'll definitely be able to help you with that uh, here later on in the video when we do our actual install. So uh, as far as the speeds that the R440 can accept, you can get uh, 2133, 2400, 2666, 2933 or 3200, but there's a whole lot that's going on in there. For starters, uh, 3200 um, and 2933 are only going to work if you have second gen scalable. And even if you're using second gen scalable, uh, the 3200 is just going to clock down to 2933, and you have to have a CPU that supports 2933, but that is the true fastest that you can get is 2933 with the second gen scalable updated BIOS and a CPU that can handle it, right? Um, whereas with a first gen scalable, the fastest speed you can get is going to be 2666, and you can't, it doesn't support 3200 or 2933, so if you go, go to try to throw them in there, you're going to have some issues with it. And then on top of that, let's just say you're using like an Intel Silver proc, it might only support up to 2400 uh, speed as a whole. So if you're going to buy make sure you check your uh, CPU because you might not need to pay extra for a faster speed that's going to clock down anyway. So just a couple of notes to think about when you are going to uh, buy your upgrades. And if you're wondering this as a whole, like trying to figure out, hey, what, what upgrade do I want? You know, all, all these questions, are, you know, you're a little confused, definitely reach out to our sales team. We can definitely help you out and pick the perfect kit for you that's the right fit for your server, okay? Now let's talk about some of the sizes that you can use. Well, you can go as low as a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or wait, all the way up to 128 gig. And I, I get it, uh, Dell spec sheet doesn't show that the 128 gigs are supported, but they are, we have validated them. You are gonna need to have a second gen scalable proc in order to do it, and you are gonna need to have an updated BIOS, but those are all things that are very doable. So if you're at home and you're trying to figure out, hey, can I, can I use 128 gig DIMMs, uh, just make sure uh, that you have that second gen scalable proc. That's gonna be the key there for you. So that brings us to what type of RAM is supported for the uh, R440. Well, you have ECC registered, which is known as an RDIM, and you have load reduced, which is known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is one terabyte using 1664 gigs at 2933 speed, and again, second gen scalable proc for that. Um, now with load reduced, the, uh, the max is going to be two terabytes, and you can do that with 1,628 gigabytes at 2,933, and again, for that speed, second gen scalable proc. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the sizes, the speeds, uh, what's compatible, let's show you how to actually install them and what are the, uh, the memory channels uh, inside, and uh, if, if you're not maxing out again, uh, which slots to put them in first. So before we do that, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work inside the machine. So we will not need any tools for this as long as your uh, latch is set to unlock, which would require Phillips head. Other than that, you don't need anything to install the RAM. Um, so let's just put this to the side. We'll pop our lid off here. And so this is what I had mentioned as far as kind of a wonky configuration. You have a CPU 1 that has 10 DIMM slots, and you have CPU 2 that has 6 DIMM slots. It's just strange. Why not 8 and 8? You know, I'm sure there was some reason behind it, but they both have 6 memory channels, which means that uh, back here on CPU 2, it's 1 DIMM per channel, uh, which makes sense, but then it gets a little funny up here where it's one DIM per channel, then two DIMs and two DIMs per channel. Uh, so it's just, again, it's kind of a strange configuration. So we'll help you to figure out where to put your modules in, how many to order uh, to have a correct balance, right? So personally, what I would say um, is you would want to order uh, in sets of, so let's assume you have two CPUs, you would order uh, six CPUs or six modules for the six memory channels up here, six modules for the memory channel up here. So I would say six and 12 are great. 
uh, configurations to order, or if you're doing all of them, of course, then just 16. Um, and that's that. Those are kind of the uh, the numbers that I would say as far as kits to buy. Okay. All right. Now, and one thing I did want to point out is that the air baffle is labeled. Uh, so it you know it labels. Hey, this is CPU one. This is CPU two. It has all the DIMM slots labeled, so it tells you you know this is A one. It tells you that this is B one. It just everything's labeled on here for you. So uh, while it's also labeled on the motherboard, you can take your air baffle, set it to the side, or you can put it a little bit ahead if you want. And it's it's kind of nice little helpful guide. So um, now we'll hop in and we'll talk about the the uh, the memory channel. So the whites are all the start of the memory channel. So you'll notice that all six of these are white because they're their own channel. And then these have uh, six whites as well. And then you have four blacks. That's how you get to your 10. And so the first slot of, or the first, or the white is always the uh, start of a new memory channel and the black will be the second slot of the channel. And then there's just no second slot over here, of course. So right here, this is gonna be A1, A2, A3, come back to the inside, A4, a5, A6. So let's just say you had three modules, you'd put them in these first three whites. If you had six, you'd put them in the, the next three over here. If you have two CPU, or excuse me, you have two CPUs, then you would actually come over here before ever even touching any of the blacks, and you would go to B1, B2, B3, swing around over here, B4, B5, B6. And then once all 12 of the whites are filled up, you'd come back over here and you would do A7, A8, a9, A10. So that is the actual order that you would do as far as um, how you would uh, uh, install and how you'd configure. So now I'm going to actually close these back up, or excuse me, I'm going to open all these other ones back up. I like all my modules to be fully open or all my tabs to be fully open. So when I go to install the modules, it just makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, I don't have any issues and it's all about just safety for the parts. So one of the other things I wanted to point out right here, there's a notch in the middle. This notch is known as a key. And really I shouldn't say it's in the middle. That's the, the issue with it is it's not perfectly centered. So what that means is you need to make sure you line it up properly depending on which way you face it. You could accidentally damage the leads or you could actually accidentally damage the dim slot. It's a common user error so I always like to point that out. Just make sure you line your module up properly. So it's going to actually go this way and we're going to start with A1. So the other thing I always like to point out too before we get uh, going too far is it looks like the modules in there. It looks like it's seated but it's not seated. You need to hear these two clicks and those two clicks let you know that now the module is fully seated. Um, it's a very, again, common user error where someone thinks that they have a bad dim and really the module is just not fully seated. So we always tell people and recommend to them to rotate your modules around. And in the process of rotating the module around, generally what happens is you uh, pretty much uh, seat it properly in a, in a different uh, different slot. So all right, so there was A1, A2, A3. So now we're going to come over here and this is going to be A4. And that's one thing worth noting. A lot of times when you switch sides, that uh, key in the middle will actually flip-flop. Uh, it does not do that here uh, and it's all facing the same way, which is actually very helpful. So now we'll do A5 and we'll do A6. So again, now if you only had one CPU, then you would come over here to A7 and you'd start filling up all your blacks. Most people are probably gonna have two CPUs. So then what you're gonna do is actually come over here to B1. And B2. and B3. Then swing back over here and we're going to do B4 B5 and B6. And just in the interest of time I'm going to fill the, uh, the black ones up off screen to fully max this out. But again, that's why I would recommend if you have six, fill these six white ones up first. If you have 12 and two CPUs, assuming of course, these back here, and then you'll start hitting your black ones. 
All right, so just like that, I have filled all 16 slots up. In this case, we only put in uh, 1632 gigs, which is going to be uh, 512 gigabytes, which is still a great configuration overall. Uh, but for this customer, they didn't need uh, two terabytes, and not everybody needs two terabytes of RAM. Not everyone needs uh, one terabyte of RAM. 512 is an amazing uh, configuration as a whole. I'm a big fan of uh, like the 512, 768 type of configurations are pretty good. So anyhow, uh, that being said, I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. If you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you need a custom built R440 or any other Dell server, for that matter, or HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we custom build uh, Dell, or we custom build new and used, and we would love the opportunity to earn your data center business, and we'd love the opportunity to earn your home lab business, so please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks again for stopping by. Take care, guys.